Hello everyone, Linda Israel here, and today I'm going to make a sewing tag using a few supplies that I have and a couple of tools. So let's get started. Right off the bat, I have a little button that I just pulled some thread through and towed, tied it into a bow. I'm going to flip this button over, and on the back side, I'm going to use the best glue ever. I'm going to put a little drop on here. And then I'm going to set this aside so that it can dry clear in just a few minutes. So hopefully by the time I get to the step that I need the button, the glue will be dry. And we'll know it's dry because it'll turn clear. All right, so next what I want to do is I want to do something with this little dress form. So let me clear some space. And I've got a little piece of paper behind here. And I'm going to rotate it this way. I've been having some fun with using a piece of paper underneath and then using the Distress Oxide Picked Raspberries, the color I've chose. I've got a little dauber here, so I'm just going to ink up on my little dauber. This does get messy, so if you don't like your fingers to get dirty like mine are, you can wear gloves. Um, I found that if I use uh, a lot of hand lotion on my hands before I get started that it's easier to clean up my hands afterward. So all I'm doing is kind of holding it in place because I'm kind of doing a two for one. We're going to get the decoration on the page because of using the distre the distress oxide on top of our little silhouette. So we're getting a little bit of a distress oxide shape over here on this side and then what I'm going to do is close this up and I'm going to lay it on this side. I kind of bent it. I was a little rough. Lay it on this side. I'm just getting another scrap of paper because next I'm going to spray with some Tattered Angels and this is the Artsy Cherry from the So Artsy Tattered Angels Glimmer Mist set in my shop as well as this dress form. It's another product that I have in my shop. Okay, I'm just letting it splatter because it was in the lid. Um, make sure that when you shake Tattered Angels that you leave the lid on because it can splatter everywhere. And I'm just going to spray this on top. It's going to react a little bit with the Distress Oxide and it's also going to give it some shimmer. I'm going to dry this with a heat tool really fast and that should be dry. I've got this little sewing collage here and I thought it would look kind of neat to stamp on top. So I'm going to use the Ranger Archival Ink Jet Black and ink up the stamp and what I want to do is stamp on top of the dress form just a little bit kind of giving it a little bit of a, a unique texture and I also did a little stamping in the background there at the same time so we got a little bit of texture on there this I'll say this can become a journal page later on if I want can do some more stuff on the back in fact I am going to do some more stuff I am going to take this piece of paper here, and this is like a pattern piece. It's another rubber stamp that I have in my shop. The links will be in the description box if you're curious about any of the products that I use. What I'm going to do with this one is I thought it'd be kind of fun to kind of stamp all over. We're going to cover some of it up, but I wanted to be able to see some of the design, and I thought this would be kind of cool to just kind of adding the pattern pieces here and there. And I'm just going to randomly stamp over this page. So it's not a perfect stamping, but it's kind of cool because it's just in the background. I'm going to use some Distress Ink a Walnut Stain and go around the edges. I'm going to round the corner first. I just remembered I want to round that corner. I've got a piece of fabric here that I thought would look kind of cute if it's in the bottom portion of this little tag I'm making. So I'm going to use some Aline's Tacky Glue on the fabric and adhere it directly to the chip or cardstock that I use as the tag. The tag is about three by six in size and it was just something that I already had cut on my desk. So use what you have or if you want you can take some scrapbook paper and Cut it into six inch by three inch rectangles, and that could be the beginning of a tag. All right, so I'm just going to glue this down. 
you could sew around this. I only have black thread in my machine. And I didn't want to change it because the black really didn't show up when I did a test run. And I'll show you my test run when we get done. So I'm just going to go ahead and leave it as it is. Then I've got this little measuring tape that's a rubber stamp. And I stamped it on some kind of a pale yellow, almost a golden yellow. And I thought that might look kind of cool if we went like up the side here. So I'm just going to glue that into place. I went ahead and went a little bit lower than the fabric and of course a little bit higher on this side. I've got some washi tape here that I thought would look kind of cute if we put it right about maybe from the edge and then I'm just going to rip it so I'll have kind of a ripped edge there. And then I've got this quote that says be a difference maker and I think that would look good on top. This is a white words on black inspirational and I have it as a digital download or you can get a physical where I cut these out for you. And I think that'll look good right here. All right, I've got a hole punch. I'm gonna go ahead and put a hole in the top of this little tag. I've got some fibers here, so I'm just gonna grab a few little fibers. Where's the end? It's got three different fibers. I'm gonna fold it in half, kind of look at it. And sure, that's a good amount, so I'll trim it. I'll fold the fibers in half and take a scrap of wax linen thread. And that's what I'll use to thread all these fibers through. If you've ever tried to wrangle a bunch of fibers, sometimes it's difficult. But if you do this little trick, you can pull a bunch of them through. Just split that. And then grab your little bundle and pull it through. And then just be careful, just gently pull, because if you pull really hard, you could pull that right out. And then you'll need like a hole in reinforcer. But I found if I just take my time and just gently pull on all the pieces, then it's easy to come up. All right, so there we are so far. We're looking pretty good. Now we've got this little guy. And I think what I want to do is I want to put a little piece of lace on here. So I've got a little piece of lace here. And I've got a glue gun that I've turned on. I like using the glue gun because it sets up pretty quick. Where if you use wet glue, it doesn't. You have to wait on it. So I'm just going to put just a barely a little drop on the back side and fold this over. So it kind of gives that flared out look there on the side. And then what I'm going to do, I'll kind of zoom in for you. Okay. So I'm just going to put, my, my glue stick isn't quite all the way down, so it won't catch. But if I don't have it, it won't push. <laughs> so I'm just going to put a little drop of glue on top of the little dress form piece. Kind of lay this piece of lace in. And then kind of do some little pleats. Remember hot glue gets really hot, so be careful and don't stick your fingers down into it. I'm using my nails. I've used a uh, paintbrush. I've used a chopstick in the past. All right, I'm going to cut just a little bit off here. I'm going to fold this piece over. If I can get it to cooperate. All right, so I think I've got my lace tweaked out the way I want it, and I'm going to glue that on top here. So I'll just glue that down with the Lean's Tacky Glue. I'm going to put a little drop of glue at the top of the neck of the dress form, and then let me find that button that we did earlier. So it's almost clear in some spots. It may be hard for y'all to see. It's a little milky in the center, but it should be dry enough that I'll be able to put it down on top of this lace. I could use hot glue, but sometimes that hot glue squishes out, and I don't like the way it, you know, makes that little rim around there, so that's why I didn't use hot glue this time. And then I've got a little rhinestone, just a little rhinestone, that I thought would look kind of cute if we put it right up here at the top. And then there's the little tag I made. Let me 
get the other one I made. This is one I made earlier, my little prototype. And I used black thread when I zigzag stitched around it. You can see it on the back side, but you can't really see it on the tag. So that's why I opted out. But if you have a lighter color fabric that you're using, it would look really cute with the stitches around there. Well, I hope you like seeing just another idea of using some of the scraps that you have, use some rubber stamps and make a little tag out of it, especially like a little sewing theme tag. All right, everybody, thank you so much for watching. Make sure that you like this video, share it with your friends, comment if you have any comments, check the description box down below for links for the products that I use. And of course, know that I go live on Mondays at 3 45 p.m. on Thursdays at 12 30 p.m. and then check out my Facebook groups by Linda Israel is where I kind of share things that I'm working on when I'm going to go live uh, new products that I have and then you're welcome to share your paper craft items there or ask questions and then the friendly junk journal people is the largest junk journal people junk journal group on facebook and we'd love to have you there of course the links are below all right everybody thank you so much for taking the time to watch have a fabulous day and be creative bye